Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Monday, July 28th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. Solar Cycle 25 is coming to a close. Solar Max was officially reached last year in October, and we are now dropping off a cliff. And the current earthquake swarm over at Mount Rainier continues now with over 1,055 quakes in just the last month. The largest seismic swarm ever recorded. Buckle up. We've got a lot to talk about. And keep calm because it's boom time. Live updates on Minnesota weather. Thunderstorm warnings have been issued for the Twin Cities and storms are now dropping down into Iowa. A derecho to charge across the central U.S. with destructive winds overnight. A powerful line of thunderstorms may cause significant widespread damage across parts of the central United States into Monday night with an AccuWeather local storm max of 115 miles per hour. Holy macaroni. Here is the AccuWeather exclusive forecast for early week. You can see the hot conditions will be continuing for most of the central and eastern U.S., and severe thunderstorm threat tonight through Tuesday morning. We've got a high severe thunderstorm threat bullseye from Minneapolis south towards Des Moines. And tomorrow, the threat moves, well, it stays in the, over the same area and it repeats. It's like a one-two punch. And we'll show you that on the models. Currently over at Tornado HQ Live, severe weather, you can see we've got Four severe weather warnings, Minnesota and Iowa. We're talking Blue Earth, Les Sioux County, Rice, Steele, and Waseca County in Minnesota. In Iowa, we've got Buena Vista County, Cherokee, Clay, Dickinson, Lyon, O'Brien, Osceola, Plymouth, and Sioux. And these look like some significant storms. They're going to be moving east and south overnight. And here is the hail map for yesterday. I just wanted to point out 71 square miles of hail, one inch or larger, most of which fell in Minnesota, Minneapolis, with a level three hail alert there. And now the full forecast. We've got widespread damaging winds likely in the northern plains as heat continues in the central and southeast U.S., Severe thunderstorms, heavy rainfall, and flooding are possible from the northern Rockies into the upper Midwest. A derecho is likely across portions of the northern plains happening now with several gusts expected to exceed 75 miles per hour. Extreme heat is expected to intensify across much of the southeast and Tennessee valleys continuing through much of the week. Will there be a reprieve? Well, we can pray for one. Here is the GFS model, and we'll walk it through, and I'll show you about that one-two punch. So there are the storms developing in southern Minnesota and Iowa now. Three hours, they're going to move a little south and a little east, and then by morning, it all repeats again. There's Wednesday, just a little further south and right through central Iowa. Overall, pretty low-level chance of flooding, totally accumulated precipitation showing in the next 48 hours, just three to four inches, maybe some localized areas of up to five inches. And that would be up in the northeast corner of Iowa and the southeast corner of Minnesota. So heed the warnings, get to high ground if flash flooding is happening. The tropical outlook for the Atlantic is bleak. There's nothing on the map, but the eastern Pacific is quite active. Now four Disturbances, one currently a tropical storm named Kelly and a hurricane, a hurricane named Iona. Now, none of these storms are a threat to the Hawaiian Islands. They're just going to move east here and out into nowhere. So that's some good news there. Australia getting some bad news. Take a look at this. Australia's snow season delivers and record cold up north. Holy macaroni. Take a look at some of the snow here. Resorts like Hotham have seen more than 16 inches from the latest system alone, driving the base to a season high of over 40 inches. All lifts are now spinning in Hotham. 
and record cold up north. Arctic air dipped into parts of the U.S. and Canada over the weekend, setting records across the upper Midwest and into the Canadian prairies. Daily records fell as cold air surged south. Calgary, for example, shivered at just 57 Fahrenheit on Saturday as the high. It's coldest July 26th in more than 90 years. Looking ahead, the summer cold looks set again to gain traction as the calendar nears August. So for all of those sweltering right now, a cool down is coming. And the Mount Rainier earthquake swarm is the largest ever recorded. An earthquake swarm at Mount Rainier that started July 8th is considered one of the largest ever recorded for the volcano. An earthquake swarm is a cluster of seismic activity or earthquakes that occur one after another. And so far, the largest earthquake in the swarm happened on July 11th and was no larger than 2.4 in magnitude. By Friday, seismologists with the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network had located 1,010 earthquakes. They expect to locate more earthquakes from the data gathered during the swarm. Mount Rainier is known to have about nine earthquakes per month. And swarms happen at Mount Rainier once or twice a year. However, the previous swarms were smaller than the one that started on July 8th. The USCS reports that the earthquake activity has slowed down from the 41 events per hour on July 8th to just a few events per hour by July 25th. They say that any seismic activity after will be either noticeable or cause little to no damages. So, also, the USGS says there is no reason to be worried about the earthquakes at Mount Rainier because it remains at a color alert of normal or green. And that's because there has been no uplift as of yet. There you can see that amazing 1,055 earthquakes just this month. And most of them occurring as of July 8th. Come over here to Rainier and you can see the orange quakes have been the last two days, and there don't appear to be any red quakes, which would be the last two hours. So the seismicity is cooling down, but something is definitely afoot at Rainier. Seismic update. We had a big boomer, a 6.9 earlier today near Macquarie Island region. Some aftershocks happening there. We do have some spicy 5.1 activity in the Kamchatka, potentially some Precursors to some major eruptions there, potentially Chivalouche. We also have a 3.2 in Georgetown, Idaho, normal activity. Take a look at this quake over here, a 5.0 in Iran. And a 6.5 in Indonesia. So some moderately large quakes. Pretty average activity worldwide. And that brings us to Iceland. Take a look at this. We've got some activity on the Vatna Yokel Glacier. And, and that activity is a 5.2 earthquake at Bartabunga with some other large aftershocks. But overall, it doesn't look like anything is developing here. But we'll have to keep a close eye on Bartabunga as things move forward. And that brings us to Worldwide Volcano News. For Monday, the 28th of July, first on the list is Ducono with a 13,000-foot blast there. San Gay to 22,000. Santa Guito, no volcanic ash. Ibu to 7,000. Semaru, who knew, now you do a 15,000-foot blast there today. Possible volcanic ash at Reventador. Popo to 20,000 feet. Livotolo to 6,000. And Naya, Mora, Gira, volcano in the Congo. Lava flow eruption continues. You can see this. Strange caldera and those little streamers there from satellite. Ducono to 10,000 feet. Sangay to 22,000. Ibu to 7,000 feet. Semaru to 15,000 feet. Sakonajima wraps up the list with, no, it doesn't. 6,000 foot puff at Saku. Popo to 20,000. Sangay, volcanic ash. Sakonajima, 5,000 foot puff there. And wrapping up the list is Ducono with the 10,000 foot blast. Bringing us to space weather, where you can see yesterday, which is, was today, <laughs> all quiet, very low-level activity, tiny little sunspots, no coronal holes, KP is very low, three-day geomagnetic forecast is all quiet, and that's because we're dropping back down into solar minimum of cycle 25. 
So for the next two to three years, this baby is going to drop all the way down to zero. Yeah, that's zero sunspots, kids. Went to see the shooting stars tonight as four meteor showers collide. Well, tonight is a big one, and it's your best opportunity if you've never seen a meteor to go out and look up. We've got four overlapping storms, the Perseids, the Southern Eta Aquarids. I mean, it's all over the map here. The Southern Delta Aquarids, the Piscis Austrinids. Holy macaroni, we've got a lot going on. Um, so all you have to do, there's no moon. It was just a sliver and it has set. It is pitch black out. So if the skies are clear, go out and look up and well, be amazed. Uh, and this paper coming out this month, influence of geomagnetic disturbances on myocardial infarctions in women and men from Brazil. And the paper, what it found was that Women are most at risk for myocardial infarctions due to space weather. All they did was look at the data that already existed, and what they found was a spike in females when geomagnetic storming was happening in myocardial infarctions. I will list the paper below. The good news is that, well, based on the data, if you're a dude, you're fine. Now, this coming from Armstrong Economics. Are volcanoes erupting to prove climate change is BS and nature is in charge? Well, I don't think that's why they're erupting. Volcanoes erupt all the time, Martin. But there is some interesting correlations here on this data set he provides. This is simply the number of eruptions yearly and not based on intensity. But these peak times here, like in... 2016, 2006, they correspond with solar minimum, which means that even though we're dropping off a cliff here, and there are actually people reporting that we are at record-breaking eruptions this year. Look at where we're at. Absolute nonsense. People are unwilling to go look at data and find out information because what they really want is to make stuff up to make them feel good. When, if you look at this graph, you can see the number of eruptions annually has been dropping off a cliff since, well, 2016. A little spike here at Solar Max, but not that much. Um, the bad news is all large volcanic eruptions happen during the drop down in the solar cycle towards solar minimum. During the drop, not at the bottom, not at the rise up, most of them during the drop. So that means in two or three years, we could see a VEI 6 or 7 eruption simply based on statistical analysis and data. So hopefully you don't live near any of those types of volcanoes. And your DNA is full of ancient viruses, and they happen to be running the show, according to a new study. For years, scientists thought that certain parts of our DNA were useless, leftovers from ancient viruses that serve no purpose. But a new international study has flipped that idea on its head. Yes, researchers had discovered that the so-called junk DNA sequences inherited from viruses millions of years ago actually help control how our genes behave, especially during the earliest stages of human development. Some of these viral fragments seem to act like on-off switches, for genes, and may even help explain what makes humans different from other species. How do you like them apples? I'm sure Lee and I will be talking about this on our science show exclusively on Rumble. And our good friend Willie Soon sent out the newest upload here at DDP meetings, post-mortem on the woo <laughs> policies with Ronan Colony, uh, with Ronan Connolly, PhD. I think you'll enjoy the expose. It certainly lays out a lot of the problems that have happened over the last four years. And breaking news, Amish kids almost never get allergies or sick or vaccines. And scientists finally know why. Well, they don't get sick because they are outside most of the day, tending to the animals, breathing in viruses and bacteria and dirt, and they're exposed to everything that Gen Xers like me were exposed to when we were children. We were literally kicked out of the house at 7 a.m., had to walk to school, 
and weren't allowed back in the house until dinner or dark. Yeah, that's the way it worked. So we were constantly exploring, rolling around in the dirt, getting dirty and exposed to all the things that you need to be exposed to to be healthy. Now, unfortunately, the modern world with hand sanitizers and all this garbage are protecting all their children, keeping them inside and not exposing them to anything. We don't play like we used to with the neighborhood all day outside, street hockey, baseball in the street or the cul-de-sac. Freedom. We played all night and we used the entire block. Uh, but the Amish still do. So they still do the same stuff that we did 40 years ago, that, which is not happening now, which is why their kids are healthy. It's why I don't get sick ever. I got good genes. <laughs> and starting tomorrow is the Archuleta County Fair. Yeah, the county fair starts tomorrow and runs toward, to Thursday, August 2nd. Anyway. The whole point is I am going to be entering Oppenheimer Ranch Project Garlic and several other things, so we'll let you know if we win a ribbon. Wish us luck. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up. Share this video. Please subscribe if you haven't. Half the people that watch this are unsubscribed. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, and we need your help. So just hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications that you will probably never get. Just make sure to come back here every night or every morning because we've been uploading every day for almost a decade. And be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. <laughs>